In this tutorial, you will learn how to construct three different types of triangles. First, you'll construct a triangle using just the segment tool. When you drag the triangle's vertices, you'll change its sides and angles, but it will always remain a triangle. Next, you'll learn how to construct an isosceles triangle. You'll see that a circle plays an important role in the construction. No matter how you drag the triangle, it will maintain two equal sides. Finally, you'll construct an equilateral triangle. This time, you'll use two circles as part of the construction process. As you work with the triangles, you'll learn how to change their appearance, add labels to their vertices, and tick marks to their sides. I'm going to use Sketchpad to make several kinds of triangles. To begin, I'll open Sketchpad. When I do, I obtain a blank sketch. This is my workplace, where I'll be building the triangles. For my first triangle, I'll use the Segment tool to draw and connect three segments to form a triangle. To do so, I'll go to the toolbox and I'll choose the Segment tool. I'll now move on to my sketch and click, move, and click again. This is the first side of my triangle. Now I'll move over an endpoint, notice it's highlighted, and I'll click, move, and click again. There's the second side of the triangle. Finally, I'll click, move, and click again. And oops, I made a mistake. I didn't connect those two points. This isn't a triangle. So how can I undo my mistake? Well, with Sketchpad it's easy. I'll go to the Edit menu, and choose Undo Construct Segment. Now I'm back where I was before, and I can use the Segment tool to click, drag, and carefully align those two points, and click again. And there I have my triangle. Now to complete my triangle, I'm going to use the Polygon tool. I'll choose it from the toolbox, and I'll click on one vertex, another vertex, the third vertex, and then click back on the original vertex. And there I have my triangle. Let's see what happens when I drag the various parts of my triangle. To start, let's drag this vertex. Hmm, something's not working. If I look in the toolbox, oh, I see, I have the polygon tool chosen. To drag any object, I need to make sure I have the arrow tool chosen. So I'll choose that move back onto my sketch, and drag this vertex. There, my triangle is now moving. And notice that this one triangle, what looked like a single triangle, can now become any triangle. It can become a triangle with acute angles, it can become a triangle with an obtuse angle, it can become a triangle with a right angle, it can become a big triangle, a small triangle, you name it. It can become any triangle at all. Now that I've made my triangle, I'd like to make another one. This time I want to construct an isosceles triangle, that is a triangle with two congruent sides. Well one thing I could do is to go back to the triangle I already have and drag a vertex and make the triangle so that two of its sides look congruent. I could even measure these sides and fiddle around some more until those two sides were exactly equal. The problem is that if a friend of mine were to come along and drag a vertex of this triangle, then whoop, my triangle no longer looks isosceles. In fact, I can make it into any triangle I want. So for a triangle to be isosceles with Sketchpad, it has to pass something we call the drag test. That means no matter which vertex of the triangle I drag, the triangle can change its shape or size, but it has to maintain two congruent sides. So how can we make a triangle that's isosceles and one that stays isosceles no matter what we drag? Turns out that the compass tool is very useful for doing this. So I'm going to choose the compass tool, move on to my sketch, and click, move, and click again to place a circle. This circle comes with two points, a center point and a radius point. If I choose my arrow tool and drag either point, I see that the circle changes size. So let's continue with the isosceles triangle construction. 
I'll choose the segment tool and I'll connect the center with the radius point. And there I have a radius of my circle. I'm going to make a second radius now by starting at the center and moving until the circumference is highlighted. And there's where I'll place my other point. Now by placing the point on the circumference, when I drag it now, you'll see that it only moves along the circumference of my circle. I can't drag it off. One last time, I'll go to the Segment tool, and I'll connect these two points. To finish my triangle, I'll choose the Polygon tool, and click on the triangle's three vertices, and then the first vertex again, to finish the triangle. Now that the triangle is complete, I'll leave it to you to think about why it's isosceles. In the meantime, consider what would happen if we showed this sketch to somebody else. We might not want them to see the circle, since the circle was part of the construction process. We could select the circle with the arrow tool, go to the Edit menu, and choose Cut to remove it. But notice what happens. Not only does the circle go away, but so does our isosceles triangle. That's because we used the circle to construct the triangle. If we delete the circle, well, then the triangle goes away with it. So this is not a good idea. Let's go back to Edit and choose Undo Delete Circle, and there, it's back. What can we do instead? Well, instead of cutting the circle, let's try something else. Let's try hiding the circle. I'm going to click in white space to deselect everything, and then I'm going to select just the circle. I'll go to the Display menu and choose Hide Circle. Notice the circle goes away, but my triangle remains. In fact, if I drag a vertex of my triangle like this one, notice that it still is moving in a circular path. That means this point is still attached to the circle, and the circle is still there, but it's hidden in the background. My sketch now contains two triangles. Both triangles have points that are the same size, segments that are the same width, and neither triangle has labels on its vertices. So I'd like to add some pizzazz to the sketch. And I'm going to start with my isosceles triangle and its three points. I'll use the arrow tool to select the three points, and then I'll go to the display menu and choose point style large. My points are now bigger. To continue, I'll change the width of the segments of my isosceles triangle. I'll click in white space to deselect everything, and then I'll select the three segments. I'll go back to the display menu and choose line style, thick. To continue, I'll select the triangle, Go back to the display menu again, and choose Color Blue. Now I'd like to add some labels to this isosceles triangle. I'll go to the toolbox and choose the text tool. When I now move on to my sketch, I'm moving a little hand icon indicating that I can move directly over an object like this point, and when the hand turns black, click to place a label. I'll place the other two labels for my three vertices of this triangle to get isosceles triangle A, B, C. If I want to move the placement of a label, like say point B here, I can move directly over this label and drag it so that I can adjust where it's located. I can also change the name of a label. If I move over a label like say point C, Notice that when my hand is directly over C, a little A appears inside the hand. I can now double click, and in the dialog box that appears, give my uh, point a new label like, say, D, and click OK. I now have isosceles triangle A, B, D. Because this triangle is isosceles, it would be helpful if I could indicate that its two sides, AB, and AD were congruent. To do that, 
I'll use the marker tool. I'll choose it from the toolbox and then move directly over segment AB and click once. A tick marker appears. If I move over segment AD and click there, I can place a tick marker there too. If I click repeatedly on a tick marker with the marker tool, it changes the number of tick markers that appear. So I can go back here and put two tick markers on AB and two tick markers on segment AD. If I'd like to move a tick marker, I simply drag it with the marker tool. My final construction is going to be an equilateral triangle. To start, I'll select the two triangles that I've already made and drag them off to the side of my sketch so that I have some blank space to work in. An equilateral triangle has three congruent sides. And one way that I might think about building it would be to use the segment tool to draw a triangle and then fiddle with its vertices until the three sides were congruent. The problem with this method is that if someone else came along and then dragged my triangle, it wouldn't remain equilateral. So just as with the isosceles construction, I need to find a way to make sure that the sides of my triangle remain congruent. Well, with the isosceles triangle I had two congruent sides. With an equilateral I have three. The circle helped before when I made the isosceles triangle, so maybe it can help again. I'll choose the circle tool and draw a circle. Now I'm going to construct a second circle and look carefully at what I do. I'm going to start at the radius point of my first circle and click. And now I'm going to move and I'm going to click again when I've reached the center of my first circle. There. Now I have two circles and these two circles are interlocked. If I go back to my arrow tool and I drag either point, notice that the circles change size in unison. In fact, if I draw a segment connecting these two points, I have a radius of the circle on the left, and I have, at the same time, a radius of the circle on the right. This will be one side of my equilateral triangle. To find the third vertex of my triangle, I'll choose the point tool, and I'll move directly over an intersection point of those two circles. And notice when I do, the circles are highlighted. I'll click to place the point. Now I'll go back to the segment tool and I will connect that point to the other two vertices of my triangle. Finally, I'll use the polygon tool to complete the triangle. To test my construction, I'll go back to the arrow tool and drag a vertex of my triangle. I'll leave it to you to think about why this triangle is equilateral.